So if you're a Sony fan, first of all, why haven't you subscribed to the channel yet? And second of all, you've probably seen MKBHD's review of the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. And one of the key takeaways from that video was the fact that Sony really need to improve their basic camera app. And I have to echo that sentiment. However, on exploring the Xperia 1 Mark V's camera settings, I have noticed that Sony have actually done it to a certain extent. And let me know at the end of this video whether you think it's enough or whether it needs more improvement. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys all of the upgrades that Sony has made to the Xperia 1 Mark V versus the Mark IV when it comes to the basic camera app. And just to make this video a bit more interesting for you guys, I will throw in some photos side by side and video side by side comparisons so you can see the upgrades that have been made when it comes to just using the camera on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, let's start with the quick settings menu, which is the bar that runs across the bottom of the viewfinder, just above the shutter button. And you'll notice there is a change to the bokeh mode, sometimes known as the portrait mode. This is the setting you use when you want to sort of blur the background. Now, if you look on the Mark IV, you'll see it's represented by a little dot with a blurry dot behind it. When you push that, you can enable the bokeh mode. And it's been pretty decent in the past, but one of the downfalls when it comes to this particular mode is when you switch to selfie, it turns off automatically. And now what you have to do in order to open this is go to more and go to portrait selfie. And this essentially opens a third party app, which to be honest, isn't very good. Now on the Xperia 1 Mark V, we have a proper bokeh mode and they've changed the icon to be more in line with the ZV camera range and also the alpha camera range. When you enable this, you can enable the bokeh mode for the rear camera and you can also flip it around and it works seamlessly within the basic camera app. And you can tell by the results of these two photos that it's significantly improved versus the Mark IV. And something else that's important to factor in when it comes to photography is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. There's a significant jump up in image signal processing. And when that's combined with the larger sensor, which is now 1.7 times bigger than before and way more sensitive to light, you will see better results right across the board. And it's nice to see that Sony are utilizing some of the power here of the Snapdragon to bring us a proper bokeh mode. Okay, this is a significant upgrade to the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. So when you go into the shooting mode, you can set timers just like before, and you do have burst shooting low and high. Low shoots 10 frames per second, high 20 frames per second. And when you scroll all the way to the right, you'll see HDR low and high as well. That's fantastic. But now on the 1 Mark V, there is a new mode and it's called High Plus. This shoots 30 frames per second, this is the first time we've seen this on a Sony Xperia device, and it is crazy fast. And when you combine that with the face and eye tracking, it's incredible. And here's another new addition to the quick settings menu at the bottom of the standard viewfinder. It is the creative looks. So once again, Sony have brought this in line with their ZV and alpha camera range, and we now have six creative looks. On the One Mark IV, it was way more clunky than this. The creative looks on the One Mark IV, you had to go to more in the top left corner, go to creative effect here. This again would open a kind of third party app. There's not actually the standard basic camera app. And then here you could add all of these different effects. And there were quite a lot to play with, but with the new Mark V, it's just way more easier to use. So Sony have really simplified the creative look process. Now you've got standard, neutral, vivid, fluorescent, incandescent, and I believe this one is shadow or shade. Okay, this is a significant upgrade, and it's the first time that we've actually seen an option to switch on and off night mode and this is a good sign because this means that the night mode is probably more powerful than ever because if it isn't why give you the option to switch it off so just to the right of the creative looks we can now toggle the night mode off or back to auto it is on auto by default and that's probably how you'd want to keep it unless you're doing a manual photo where you're setting up a long exposure or something like that
Okay, so that's all of the surface settings upgrades that we have in the basic camera app. Now let's dive a little deeper into the camera menu because there are some upgrades here too. So aspect ratio is the same. Drive mode now has the addition of the high plus continuous shooting, which is the 30 frames per second mode. Below that is a setting that I actually wasn't familiar with. It's not a new setting, but it's new to me. When you go into the digital zoom settings, you can actually change this to AI super zoom. By default, it's on standard digital zoom. Now I did test this out. Let me know what you think of the difference between AI super zoom and standard digital zoom. Anyway, moving on from that, the flash mode is the same. Now we have the night shooting mode setting, which isn't available on the One Mark IV. We have the soft skin effect, that's the same. Focus mode is the same. Focus area is the same. But here is a change and a bit of an upgrade. When you go into face eye autofocus, there's now the option to set this to face autofocus only. Now one good use case for this new setting, face autofocus, could be if you're shooting from further away for example, on the sidelines of a football match or something like that, you can set it to lock onto people's faces, which is gonna be much easier for the phone to do than constantly trying to lock onto people's eyes from a distance. And as we scroll down, pretty much everything else is similar to the Mark IV. And that's pretty much all of the upgrades within the basic camera app for photo. Now let's look at the settings that have changed for basic camera app for video. So one of the first things you'll notice when you compare the Mark IV to the Mark V is the addition of the new blurry background bokeh portrait mode, whatever you want to call it, for video. Now this just wasn't available before on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. And it does seem as though this particular mode is locked to HD only, so you can't use this in 4K, but the good news is you can use it across all three of the focal lengths. Whereas on the Mark IV, you couldn't really do it unless you went into the Cinema Pro or the Video Pro app. Something else that's been significantly improved is the quick access to change the resolution of the video that you're shooting. For example, you just tap here, you've got full HD, 4K, 1080, 1080, 60, and regular HD 720p. So you can do that very quickly now on the Mark V. Whereas on the Mark IV, you have to go into the menu in the top right corner, then go to video size and then choose your setting here. It's just a couple of extra steps to do the same thing. I do believe this approach is gonna be much easier to use for most people. And you'll notice just next to the resolution settings is the new option for creative looks. These are exactly the same as they are in the photo settings and you can apply these to videos. Again, this is very much in line with Alpha and ZV range cameras from Sony. The ZV range is specific for creators and they've really made this pretty much identical to what you'd see there. So that's really good. And then here is the big one. It is the addition of Cinetone for mobile. Now, if you're not sure what this is, this is what's kind of known as a LUT, a lookup table, better known by most people as a kind of filter. This enhances the colors or corrects the colors to look more accurate to real life. And previously, we've only seen this on Sony's more professional cameras, but to have it here on this one is fantastic for video. Okay, this one is a pretty big deal and it is the product showcase. So this is fantastic for anybody who films any kind of content about products and things like this on their smartphone. What the product showcase will do is it will leave the eye autofocus and face autofocus on. However, when you raise things up to the camera, it will focus on whatever's closest to the camera. And then when you take it away, it will focus back on your face. And the icon here is again in line with the ZV range, the alpha range cameras, check this out. You can see how now it's locked onto my eye, but when I raise something up to the camera, it'll actually focus on the pen and not my eye. 
Now, just to the right of the product showcase is another new feature, and that's thanks to the addition of the new microphone that's built into the camera module on the One Mark 5. So when you tap on this icon, you can now switch the microphone from the stereo mics, which are top and bottom, to the microphone on the back, which is gonna be far better at picking up your subject if you're filming someone talking to camera, for example, because if there's a lot of noise around you and you're using the stereo mics, it's definitely gonna pick up more of that noise. And when we dive a bit deeper into the menu system, you'll also notice another significant upgrade. So you're already familiar with the fact that Sony have upgraded the sensor size to the 52 megapixel sensor, but they're actually only using 48 megapixels of that sensor. And that's because it allows for more movement around the edges, better stabilization. So when you go into the menu system, you'll see in the video stabilization section, you have the ability to switch from high to standard to off. Whereas on the Mark IV, you could only go on or off. And here is that in action. This is uh, stabilization off 4K 30 frames per second on basic mode. Um, you should see a bit of camera shake here due to the fact the stabilization is completely off. Let me know how it's looking. Now on the Xperia 1 Mark IV, you only have the option to switch it on and off. Whereas on the Mark V, you have three stabilization settings. It's off, there's standard, and then there's high quality. So we'll test all of those. Okay, so this is 4K stabilization on on both phones but the Xperia 1 Mark 5 now has that new high quality stabilization which we're about to test out in a moment I'm just going to walk a bit faster you guys can see if there's any improvements between the two even just on the standard stabilization mode now let's step it up on the Mark 5 okay so this is 4k now stabilization on on both phones high quality setting now on the Mark 5 let me know how much of an improvement this is in comparison to the Mark 4 very interested to hear your opinions on this. Um, from what I can see on the screen, it does seem to be considerably more stable. Let me just pick up the pace and walk a bit faster. Ground is very uneven here, so you should see quite a bit of shake. There we go, let me know what you think of the stabilization improvements on the Mark V. Now something that I liked about the Mark IV which isn't available on the Mark V is the ability to switch HDR on and off right here from the home screen. So you just tap HDR here, you can set it to standard dynamic range and a high dynamic range right there. Whereas on the Mark V you do have to go into your menu system here and go to HDR, SDR here. It was just easier to do before and I'd like to see that come back to the Mark V but hey, it's not a massive problem. And as you scroll down, you'll see the eye and face autofocus. Again, you've got the face mode, which you didn't have before. You also have the ability to switch the mic location from the back instead of the stereo. And this one right here in the middle is a big deal because one of the things that people complained about a lot on the Mark IV was overheating, particularly when filming video. So check out this guide to extend your recording duration. When you go to this, it'll actually suggest what to do in order to maximize your recording time if you're filming longer videos. So you can see here what it's recommending I do in order to extend the time, change the stabilization from high quality to standard. That will help the camera stay cooler for longer. And you can see there's a bunch of other suggestions as well that you can allow it to change for you if you do want to record longer videos. So that's pretty much all of the upgrades that we have so far. And we're likely to see more as Sony begin to roll out software updates for the One Mark V. And maybe some of these features I've showed you today will come to the Mark IV in the future as well. We'll have to wait and see. But if I could make a wish list for improvements to the basic camera app, it would be things like a spirit level, not just for shooting forwards, but also for shooting top down. I'd also like to see the quick HDR settings brought back to the video mode on the basic camera app. That would be cool. And of course, it would be fantastic to see a proper AI camera mode. Wouldn't it be great if Sony could just borrow some of that Google Pixel camera software and put that as an option here on their Sony Xperia devices? That could be next level because on paper, the hardware that this has could make it one of the best camera smartphones out there today. You could say the camera hardware is on point. The problem is the person pointing the camera might not be, especially if it's someone who's unfamiliar with how to use Sony's Photo Pro app in the Pro modes and the Video Pro and the Cinema Pro. 
And the reality is at this point in time, if you're not using those apps and you don't know how to use those apps, you're only gonna be using a small percentage of the Xperia 1 Mark 5's capabilities. So let me know in the comments, what's your wish list for additions to the Sony camera app that could make it more user-friendly for the masses? Looking forward to reading those in the comments. And here's a final thought for you guys. Human eyes are probably as good as they ever will be. In fact, they probably peaked and now are on the decline based off of how close we're placing screens to our eyes these days. And now think about this, AI eyes continue to evolve and improve. Their sensory abilities already surpass our own eyes when it comes to simple detection of light reflections. And it's fair to say that many phones have sight and one day with AI, they may have more vision than you or I. And let's just hope we see them coming. <laughs> and on that note, I appreciate you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a little thumbs up will go a long way and will help this video reach more Xperia fans like yourself. And also you'd be helping me out and I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Don't be late.